Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So today we are going to speak about speaking skills, when to speak and how. Now the point is that uh, when we are talking about something like this, the area is vast and uh, if you are going to speak about it for 30 minutes, then probably we are not going to do it justice. So we will make it an interactive session. What we are going to do is uh, as you proceed with this. Uh, lectures and as you proceed with what I am going to share with you, you kindly take note of the discussion forum as well as the slides that will be provided, which will have a number of links, surveys, uh, activities and all that and uh, as well as uh, some reference material. And if you use that, probably we will be able to do justice to this particular topic. Now, <coughs> As in the earlier cases, uh, here is an overview of what we are going to do. The first thing is to find out how good we are at speaking skills. So that is the quiz and I will be providing with a link and I expect you to go there and test it out for yourselves right now once and maybe at the end of the course once again to find out where you stand. I will be introducing the concept of what exactly we mean by speaking. We will be looking at voice skills the movement from listening to speaking, the strategic speaking, speaking in groups, a few examples and then the reference material which I am using will be made available as well as some uh, relevant articles which you might find interesting as well as my lecture notes or lecture slides and other relevant references. So here is your quiz, are you a good speaker? and uh, you can just answer 8 questions by going to this link and then we can find out where you stand. And as I have told you again and again, these are just indicators, they do not finally tell you anything in a definitive way, but they at least give you an indication as to where you stand in the context of the various skills that we are discussing over these lectures. Now the relevance of listening. That is the first thing we are going to do. The relevance of listening is something which we have highlighted in the last section uh, when we talked entirely about listening. But uh, there also I made a few points about the fact that uh, listening and speaking cannot really be separated. So what we do is uh, we take care of these things before, before we do, we st start communicating with anybody making eye contact is very important, especially when we are talking about communication at a physical level or even over Skype, if you are talking to somebody long distance. Nonverbal gestures and expressions, uh, those have to be very much there, very visible and you must be aware of what exactly they are doing. Now, this is something which we will elaborate when we deal with body language, but in this particular uh, lecture as well as the next one, we will be touching on upon some of these issues. The third one is that uh, avoiding the tendency to get distracted or so distraction. I remember many occasions where I am talking to somebody and that person is maybe working on a computer or reading something. Fine, this person is listening to me, he is nodding and all that, but as long as I have not got the complete eye contact complete attention, you often feel neglected or you feel that uh, probably the other person is not listening to you properly. So, it is very important to communicate to the other person that when you are listening to that person, obviously you are probably going to respond after that and you probably you are responding at that very moment through your nonverbal communication, eye contact and giving attention, full total attention becomes very, very significant. Now here I would like to share with you some of the very interesting things I have realized in the context of uh, giving atten attention to somebody is the fact that 
we live in a world of multitasking where uh, we we very often love to do two things three things together driving a car and talking over a mobile phone talking to somebody and looking at the computer things like that or looking at the mobile and speaking with somebody these are things which are pretty regularly done but uh, research suggests that uh, we are actually very poor multitaskers uh, what basically happens is that when we give something our total attention our ability to perform our ability to network the information our ability to remember and complete whatever uh, completely understand and to communicate is enhanced to a very significant extent now in order to do that obviously uh, it's very important that you do one thing at a time and a lot of research tells us that actually we are not multitaskers we shift we switch between two tasks and when we do that the efficiency level significantly goes down asking questions is very important because that's way of checking whether you have got the information correct or not asking questions also is a way of showing your concern your interest so that's again relevant and when you have done all these things you can make a very easy and smooth transition from uh, performing one role let's say the role of a listener to the role of a speaker because you see that uh, you have done everything to catch or grab the other person's attention and now she is or he is ready to listen to you when you speak because it's a mutual interdependent process and you have already done your part of the job so in a way indirectly you are also pressurizing the other person to listen to you because you have done the same thing for that person so that is very very important and once this part of the thing is over we move from listening to speaking you see that uh, we have already uh, talked about the transition we have made the transition and uh, here are a few things you need to keep in mind when you are moving switching from listening to speaking listen for conversation control what i mean to say is that very often we are impatient to talk we are impatient to speak and uh, even when somebody has barely stopped talking we start speaking we are always short of time we are always in a hurry we don't have enough time to listen to complete information well it's true of uh, our situation it's true of our circumstances but then probably it's a good idea even then in spite of that to listen completely that reduces a significant amount of uh, confusion that reduces the cognitive load it increases comprehension and i have had a personal feeling that when i do that 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 particular day is much more coordinate cogent comprehensive than other days where i am not doing that as a practice the thing the transition automatically becomes smooth because when you speak you are speaking with the complete information in a much more meaningful way unsolicited advice now we will talk about that when we talk about gender but this is a tendency we have and very often in the indian cultural context we jokingly say that uh, the moment you talk about a disease or a small ailment you find that there are 5 10 30 30 uh, let's say advices as to how to solve that problem take this take that take this home remedy take that kind of a medicine and all kinds of things so you see that uh, the the tendency to give advice is very very easy and it can be irritating very often it's not necessary and uh, in in the context of soft skills in the context of making good contact one needs to be very careful when one is expected to give advice and probably at other points of time it's not a good idea to do so my story versus her story the moment somebody speaks and tells an anecdote i remember five other anecdotes now i am impatient to tell this person about my anecdotes this impulse is very common and very often we get impatient with the other person we hardly give the other person enough time to stop speaking before we start off with our story now two things happen over here one is the other person feels uh, neglected offended although he or she may not directly voice that and this is for the simple reason that uh, the person feels that uh, his or her case has not been made you haven't listened to him properly the other is that now you are imposing another story whether he wants it or not so it's important to find out whether you are actually sharing anecdotes in which context that's relevant 
or if your anecdote is really related and it is actually going to aid the communication process. Somebody is giving an example, you are giving another example, maybe I agree with that person, but in those contexts it makes sense, but in other contexts maybe not. And you see that very often you want to shift the focus to the other person. If you are a good listener and that makes you a good speaker by the way, you are more interested about the other person. You are sp definitely speaking, but in the process you are learning a lot about the other. See giving information about ourselves is egocentric uh, kind of a thing, most cases. We want to brag about ourselves, we want to show off about ourselves or we want to at least assert that we are important. Now that is when we speak about ourselves. But in most circumstances, it is more important to learn about the other person and that is something which is very, very important and very often overlooked because of these tendencies. Now, talking about the I have it, that is related to the point I was making right now, talking about ourselves and uh, when we do that, the talk is something which becomes one sided and very often might flag it might get boring for the other person, might get dull. So, well I might talk about myself, but if I am able to link it to the other person in a significant way, that becomes relevant. Questions. We touched upon questions in the earlier slide, but we are elaborating a little. What kind of questions? Questions that specify, questions that clarify, questions that lead in a specific direction, questions which are based on your earlier observation and assessment of the particular person. So, that now you know exactly what you are going to ask, why? Because very often in business talks, you start off with a kind of an icebreaker, you get to know that person and this assessment where you are learning about the person is very important because the information might be the same, but how you are going to position the information, how you are going to talk about that information, how you are going to share that information becomes very, very important. You might tell, share that information with an illustration, you might give that information with an open ended question, you might assert that this information is relevant. Now, depending on the kind of person the other one is, the kind of opening statements he has made or she has made, your responses would be appropriately geared to those contexts. And it is in this question, these contexts that questioning very indirectly, very politely becomes significant because you get to know about the other person. And whether we are talking about professional life or whether we are talking about personal life, these are significant. Now, you see that uh, you might tell me that uh, uh, we have been talking about, uh, let us say speaking and listening in the interpersonal context, we have been talking about contexts which are almost you might say therapeutic where uh, or almost spiritual, well that is not the case what I have been trying to share with you is the fact that if you are really genuinely doing something where that makes us very good at that and actually helps us. So, that is how we had been talking about the, uh, uh, the context, uh, we had been talking about listening earlier when we were talking about the relationship between listening and speaking and how it influences us. But there are other contexts and here is one which I would touch upon quickly which is speaking in formal groups. I will be having some video clips, I will be linking you to certain YouTube videos as well as my personal videos, uh, where I would be showing you examples of uh, uh, speaking in formal contexts. And I will be asking you a few questions like puzzles or quiz, quizzing you and uh, that would be integrated of course with the course. And when you do that, you would be able to realize that uh, this is relevant what we are going to do right now, which is uh, the context, the formal context where we speak. However, that is not the highlight uh, of this particular course, but then nonetheless as I said with you, we would be doing a little bit of uh, linking up with YouTube videos and some activities over there which relate to group, group forms especially group discussions. And I am touching upon group discussions over here, because I feel that some of you might face formal group discussions, not actually speaking in groups, but for maybe evaluation for recruitment or for selection to some kind of uh, a course and that is the context for which I have a few tips, which I would like to share with you. The first thing which I have been highlighting again and again is listen very carefully, this time critically, quickly to assess and evaluate people to schematize their, their attitude 
towards the entire thing and then you seek openings. The opening can be physical opening where somebody is actually taking a breath, there can be conceptual openings of various kinds, openings where somebody has made a point and you feel that now you can after assessing the thing make an additional point, opening where you find that the person almost has come, but he is not giving way, you have a scope for rebuttal, opening where you want to make friends with somebody and uh, be in total agreement, opening where you analyze the points made by earlier people to assimilate them together, you would be looking for such openings and when you get those openings you speak. Wait for pauses and breaks, again I have already covered that when I am talking about physical openings, but uh, you see that uh, when these things do not work, use non-verbal gestures in a significant way, raise your hand to indicate that you would like to speak, when that does not work, use body language, nod, communicate and when that does not work, then you intervene, intervene forcefully, strongly if required, because these things uh, happen and uh, there everybody is vying for uh, a chance to speak and uh, to dominate. So, in this, this kind of a situation, you will have to use non-verbal communication to make friends, to make gestures uh, which suggest that you either agree or disagree, obviously politely and these are some of the things we will touch upon when we do non-verbal communication and to assert as I told you as opposed to be aggressive. And uh, the last point which I would like to make, because this goes against the grain of what I have been sharing about speaking and listening all this while is when in Rome act like Romans. What it basically means is that you have group discussions where people are not listening to one another, it is like a fish market, everybody is shouting. Now, if you keep quiet over there, you are losing out, you have to struggle, you have to fight, you have to also be aggressive, not just assertive if it is required. You have a group discussion where everybody is quiet, everybody is cerebral, talking in a focused way, well you behave in that particular way. So, when you are talking about formal contexts and speaking in these kinds of contexts, these are kind of role plays, these are not genuine conversations, these are more or less uh, uh, situations where you are being asked to prove yourself and in these contexts you forget the paradigms of, forget the examples, the illustrations, the guidelines which we have been discussing until this point about empathy, about understanding other people, about compassion, feelings and emotions and act in a very different way. So, that is why I felt that I should talk about it separately as a distinctive kind of thing in the context of conversation, group discussion and things like that. And in one of the later lectures, Professor Giri would be talking about the different theoretical dimensions in the context of speaking in groups. So, that will add to your inputs. However, if you want to have a few additional material, you can always check up the resources that I will be sharing with you. Now, we come to gender and listening and speaking. Now, here I would just like to share with you some of the things which, uh, which little bit of research has brought forward, but the fun part of it would be to do it together. Now, you see that uh, there, is, there is a feeling that men and women b interact in different ways socially. There is a feeling that uh, men tend to be more aggressive and uh, focus on status, try to present that kind of a thing. whereas and try to dominate essentially, whereas women attempt to create connections. And this can be misleading when men and women are talking, because uh, the intentions are misinterpreted. Now, that is a possibility, we will talk about that. Women often feel that men are not listening, because men, the moment they listen and hear that a woman is talking about a problem, immediately attempts to give a solution. Now, these are, these are kind of you might say stereotype versions of things, but probably they happen. Now, that the question is whether they actually happen or not is something which we will try to find out together. So, you find that uh, women very often do not want solutions, women want sharing, maybe they want you to listen to them carefully rather than immediately try to give a uh, solution to their problem. So, understanding when we are talking about understanding one another, the relationship or the communication is symmetrical and when we are giving advice it becomes asymmetrical, because somebody is trying to dominate over the other or show a sense of superiority over the other. And again another thing which people say is misinterpreted is women saying sorry, which does not really mean that they feel bad about having done something wrong, but 
they feel bad about the situation. So, this is again very often misinterpreted. So, what we are going to do is we are trying to find out whether actually this happens. Okay. So, one of the things which we are going to do as an assignment would be to have a quick survey. We will have a set of questions which will relate to gender and the way you perceive the other gender response and within a week we will have the results. Now, that is a very scientific and I would say a very academic way of trying to find out and I would say very reliable way of trying to find out what is happening in the Indian context, whether the points I made right now actually hold true or not. We might discover a few new points. So, the moment this talk is over, we will try to see where we are in this particular context. Voice and advice about the voice and tone. Now, that again is a big field, it is a large field. Voice training is something which uh, we can't, I cannot obviously do within the next 2 to 3 minutes or 5 minutes, but I can link you up, I can share a couple of uh, uh, recommendations about books which you can follow for doing that. I can link you up with certain YouTubes which will give you some, ide some ideas about that. We can also conduct a survey, I have that in mind, which will tell us because I will give you certain sounds or certain speech patterns and we will find out what exactly is conveyed. So, that is again something where we will learn by ourselves how significantly the, the different dimensions of voice manage to communicate different meanings or different information. Now, when we talk about the voice, what exactly are we talking about? You can hear me that is fine. Uh, you can obviously know that an Indian is speaking as opposed to uh, maybe a non-Indian person. Even some of you might be able to locate me in the eastern part of India. Now, that is because of my intonation, uh, my pronunciation of words, uh, the way I draw out certain words, we, the way I substitute certain sounds for other sounds which belong to my native tongue. So, these are the ways we are able to identify uh, about the speaker. But if we go beyond that, we are able to identify a lot of other things as well. For instance, emotions. How do we identify? It is anger, fear, sadness, happiness through voice. Now, this is an open ended question and we will conduct a small uh, as I told you survey with voice clips for us to find it out. So, this is a collaborative effort, we are going to do it together, you and me together and my team, our team over here, we will work together and we will try to find the answer to this within a week. So, please do not forget that. Attitude when we talk about let us say aggression, submission, passion. Okay. Uh, sense of superiority, things of things of that kind attitude. Now, that also gets reflected in voice. Now, we will try to again find out how that happens when we do it together. Personality gets reflected. So, you see that we are taking an aggregate of these emotions and attitudes. Uh, personality is something which is considered to be stable. So, if we see certain repetitions of these patterns over and over again, consistently over a period of time, then we attribute it. We kind of develop a framework, okay, somebody is speaking aggressively again and again, whatever that means. Maybe a loud voice, okay, empath, uh, emphasis on specific words, quick, not listening to other people. There are so many ways that voice can communicate. Then you find that this pattern is getting repeated maybe four or five times uh, uh, or you see this pattern when you get to know this person over a period of five days, 10 days, 15 days. Now, you start saying that okay, this kind of this person has this kind of a personality. So, that is another thing that we would be able to identify, but as I told you I have just touched upon this and probably we are going to do it together. So, the point is that after doing that what next? Can we change our ways of speaking? Yes, we can. It is very easy. If you are speaking in a low voice, then the first thing to do is speak loudly. That is not a big deal. If you are speaking slowly, you can speak fast. If you are speaking fast, you can slow down. So, if you can do these three things, probably we are making a significant amount of difference. So, the other things might be more complicated, but these three points I have tried to make speaking loudly, speaking slowly, or speaking fast can bring about a significant change in the way somebody understands about how you are speaking or perceives your way of speaking. Pauses or lack of pauses emphasis on specific words. So, if you make a list of 5 or 10 such things, probably we can transform the way we speak and we can improve it in a significant way. So, here is a just uh, a name of a book you can google and you can find that. You can find 
many uh, places in on the web where you have a lot of tips given to you. But what I am trying to simply convince you of is the fact that it is pretty easy to change the way you speak, uh, if you make a habit of it and if you can identify the bad habits you have formed and you can continually make a an effort to improve the way you speak. So, yes it is possible that is all I wanted to make over here. So, effective voice uh, now pleasant, balanced, relaxed, clear, expressive. Now, this is just, just for you to think about it. If you agree, well yes, if you do not agree then we will have to work as a team together and find out what makes it, what makes it, uh, what makes you a good communicator right, in terms of your voice. So, as I told you uh, in one or two of the quizzes that we are planning, these are some of the issues we will take up and we will try to solve them together. But for the time being, you have your mind set, you have these responses to these queries that I have made here and we will do it together. So, how we perceive uh, voices, here are some examples again uh, from the western context. Now, some of it uh, might make sense as I told you with the voice data that we will be sharing, some of it uh, we may disagree with and that is something which we will be able to find out as the in the following week once I have got the responses from you. So, people say that uh, when you are simulating breathlessness, it might sound young, more artistic with a man, with women it might sound feminine, pretty. Now, but the point is that you see that you are not just talking about breathlessness, breathlessness can be of various kinds, it can be with a weak voice, it can be with a high pitched voice. So, you see that depending on how it is used breathlessness, it could be have a positive connotation, it could have a negative connotation. Now, these contexts have to be combined, but even so let us say tenseness, rotundity that is roundness, increased pitch variety, what they do, these are some general assumptions and again we will after we have completed the survey find out where we stand in the context of these assumptions that we very often make. So, as I have already shared with you, uh, we are going to have either one or two surveys, kindly wait for that and during those surveys we will be taking your responses and as a team we will be trying to answer the questions that I have tried to raise over here when we talk about speaking skills and the different dimensions of speaking skills. So, we stop here friends, these are some of my references and uh, when we talk about uh, uh, conversation skills, we will elaborate on some of these points and we will proceed forward with some other interesting things. Thank you.